Welcome back guys, today we are going to be looking at the 2021 Norco Storm 2. In a previous video we checked out the Norco Storm 1 and I was very impressed with it. A secondary bike from Norco that I'm also very impressed with is the Norco Storm 2. Again, we're looking at a budget hardtail here with some impressive specs to it. So on Norco's website, this is where their Storm collection is. There's a storm rolling in. That is uh, a very cheesy line, not a fan of it. The second line, versatile off-road capability and around town fun, that is an accurate portrayal of what the Storm series are. So Norco Storm is an entry level mountain bike. This is designed for when you're actually expanding where you're going with a bike from just the city streets and now you're going more and more off-road. We touched on that with the Norco Storm 1 video. It's the same with the Trek Marlins. These are the ones where you're gonna go for ice cream regularly, but now all of a sudden you found the local trails and you're actually starting to hit them. And you're gonna need a good bike to do that. Now you can start with an entry level one, three gears on the front, seven, eight on the back, and attempt those trails. But those gear ranges are really designed for commuting. The more gears, off-road on the front rear combination is normally a bad sign. You actually want to reduce those all the way to getting one on the front and 12, occasionally 13 if you're an oddball brand. But you are definitely getting a good bike when you're going into the Norco Storms. The four and three are both solid bikes, can do a bit of off-road because of their geometry. Norco does a really good job of this in the Norco Storm series where it is that progressive geometry. So you're actually gonna get a bike that can go off-road, do the downhills confidently, but is still comfy and upright if you are just going around town with your family for ice cream. As with all the Norco Storms, they come with 100 mils of travel, which is more than enough for pretty much any mountain biking. You know, you look at the pro race bikes and the cross country teams, they're only running this kind of fork, well, a higher end, but this amount of travel of fork, that's all they have. Some even less down to the 80 mils because it's lighter weight and still takes the bite away. Obviously, if you go into downhill parks on a daily basis, you want something a little more high end than that with a little more travel, but you can definitely attempt it on something like that. Don't undersell the fact that 100 mils is a small amount of travel. Remember, pro race bikes like the Revolver, the Top Fuel, you're only just getting a little bit more than that or the same. Two big upgrades this year. You've gone to a bigger tire clearance, which is really awesome. A lot of brands will be doing this. Every bike nowadays is coming with bigger and bigger tire stock. You know, the big mountain bikes now, they're coming with a 2.6 generally. So these entry level trail bikes, they're coming with 2.25 and the clearances are huge. So you're able to get a 2.35 in there. As well, just clean luck wise, Norco has finally added through all the Storm Series internal cable routing. This just makes a bike look so much cleaner, offers a little bit more protection. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the new 2021 Norco Storm 2. These prices are in Canadian, so this is $899 Canadian, which means in American, where a lot of people are watching, this is a cheap bike. This is a very affordable bike. Comes in three different colors. So you have the green, green, the blue, gray, and the blue, black. And um, all of which are going to look fantastic. We will do a video in person if and when we get them. This whole pandemic is still making a lot of the bike sales higher than usual, a lot more demand. I would suggest getting a pre-order in if you can. As you can see below the color choices, you have the extra extra small which in most brands is just the extra small the extra small small medium and medium both in two sizes of wheel all the way up to an extra large so that it that's a wide range of sizes which means you will find a storm which fits you again in my storm one video i mentioned that if you scroll down further that website is a really good little sizer for it so you're able to find out exactly what size you need online before even going into a store so you can maybe pre-call a store ahead of time color wise though they do look fantastic this green green is a really sharp looking color it's kind of got a deep green with a lighter green to it kind of british racing green that front end looks so much cleaner 
just because of the fact it's got a one by still and that is an important fact of the Norco Storm 2. You are getting a significantly under a thousand dollar bike with a one by gear setter on it. One, it makes a bike look cleaner and two, it's going to ride and run a lot smoother. So we'll skip down to the specs here. As with all Norco Storms, they are the 6061 alloy, which means it's a nice lightweight bike. Um, we mentioned before it's a 100 mil fork, which is a nice size for anyone to use, whether you're just starting out or a pro racer. So this way gets really interesting and differs between some of the other models. This has the same Shimano Dior 1x10 that would be on like a Trek Marlin 7, but they've switched things up a little bit. So a Trek Marlin 7 has a smaller 28 tooth front ring on it. This has a 30 ring on the front, so it's going to be a little faster in the top end. Still the same 11 to 46 on the rear, so you're still going to get that low gear, but your acceleration will be a little slower, and the extra low gear when you're in the 28 to 46, you'll definitely have a little smaller of a ratio um, for your low gears. They come with a standard flat plastic pedal, which is good. Interestingly enough, they actually come with VP lock-ons, which is cool, so they're actually going to stay in place really well, not just a press on or push on, whatever you want to call it, friction grip. Standard QR axles, not through axle. So you're getting a nice entry level set of wheels, really cheap and affordable if you bend them at this kind of level of bike. If you're trying to push your limits on it, you know, it's actually an affordable replacement as opposed to going with a cheaper through axle, which if you're still learning, have a higher chance of crashing and then you're doing a costly repair on a budget bike. Again, this one, the same as the Storm 1, comes with Maxxis Recons 2.25s with that clearance for a bigger tire. The 2.25 with the Maxxis is actually going to be a nice impressive off-road tire. The Recon itself is fairly compact in the middle so you will get a pretty fast rolling speed in town. But it's overall going to be a really nice bike. So the Storm 2 compared to the Storm 1 is a very interesting bike itself is an interesting bike in comparison to even uh, Trek Merle. It has a very similar part spec to it now. Doesn't come with a dropper post, standard seat post, similar to Trek Merle, but a more affordable price point. How are they able to do this? I have no idea. It's great to see companies becoming more and more aggressive with their entry level bikes. Instead of getting a simple bike, which isn't really made to do off road, and you can do it, but there's a lot of you know, things which aren't gonna work out. They've actually done a good job of making this a competitive mountain bike. That's a stretch, but you're actually gonna be able to do a lot with this. You're gonna have reliable shifting now. The chain's gonna be under more tension because of that one by system. It's not gonna fall off as much. Most people don't even use those front gears and that's the most common thing we hear. So why put it on? Why spend all that time and effort putting on those gears when most people won't need it. Especially when you've got other bikes in your range where if they do need it, they can have it. And anyone who's starting into mountain biking will very quickly find out you will not be wanting multiple gears on the front. So that's a quick walkthrough of the Norco Storm 2. Where does it land in who should buy this bike is really hard to say. The Norco Storm 1 is definitely saying I'm a trail bike, but I'm just budget priced. The Norco Storm 2 is now the new kind of, I'm thinking about trail biking more and more and more, but I've never done it, I'm not sure. So you can save a bit of money. The dropper post is not a deal breaker to me. They're the most unnecessary things on the planet until you have one. So if you're really just starting out and you're not even sure you're gonna like this mountain bike game, don't worry about spending extra two, three hundred dollars just to get something with a dropper post. It is great, but if you never had it, you won't know what you're missing. And this could be a good stepping stone where you get this bike, keep it for a year or two, sell it, and then upgrade to something way more capable, whether you end up in a full suspension or just something like the Fluid Series or the Roscoe, something along those lines. So anyone looking at a bike and they really think they wanna try this trail game and give it a go, I recommend the Norco Storm 2. If you are thinking, all I wanna do is trail 100%, I'm decided, but I have a tight budget, the Norco Storm 1's gonna be a choice. And if you're probably just gonna be riding around for ice cream, go for an entry level model and you'll be set. So this was just a quick impression video of the Norco Storm 2. 
Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully we get one in and we can actually check it out in person. Comment below if you're thinking about getting this bike and check out all the links below to all my gear and links to the Norco website to see all the technical specs and more detailed pictures. This could be the bike for you, but I would highly recommend trying to get an order in quick. Subscribe, like, and comment if you're into this kind of video. Thank you for everyone who's already subscribed and uh, good luck out there.